Two journalists behind the Twitter files testifying on Capitol Hill as Republicans try to get to the bottom of government censorship of conservative speech. But Democrats use the opportunity to try and discredit those reporters. Watch. This isn't just a matter of what data was given to these so-called journalists before us now. It's quite obvious that you've profited from the Twitter files. You hit the jackpot on that Vegas slot machine. I honestly hope that you will grapple with this. That it may be possible that if we can take off the tinfoil hat, that there's not a vast conspiracy. Joe Concha joins us now. Mr. Concha, I know you've got some things you want to say, so take it away, my friend. Okay, Ashley, uh, to, to hear some Democratic lawmakers yesterday, most notably the disgraced Debbie Wasserman Schultz, attack Matt Taibbi, who has delivered, as we've talked about on this show, a, a lucid, sober, meticulous accounting of what happened to Twitter under the previous reg regime and Elon Musk, uh, pre-Elon Musk, I should say. Uh, we saw some Democrats call Taibbi, uh, who has written, what, four New York Times bestsellers? He's won multiple writing awards, a, quote, so-called journalist and a shill for Elon Musk? That is laughable, considering that Taibbi was praised by Bernie Sanders as being the best journalist out there at one point. And overall, the, the primary takeaway I and many others had in watching this is that Democrats at this hearing think that objective journalists are the enemy of the people and that reporters, uh, as we heard at one point, should reveal their sources when lawmakers demand they do so. This was a hot mess of a dumpster fire for the blue team on Capitol Hill, Todd. And Joe, it should be noted that the person who labeled Taibbi and Schellenberger so-called journalists is literally herself a so-called congresswoman because she is not a voting member. That point needs to be made. The irony is That's thick. Right. Meantime, Dr. Anthony Fauci is dismissing former CDC director Robert Redfield's testimony that he was purposefully excluded from talks on the lab leak theory. Listen to what he told Neil Cavuto. He is totally and unequivocally incorrect in what he's saying that I excluded him. It looked much more likely that, was a la that it was a natural occurrence from an animal reservoir. I have always kept a completely open mind. Joe, someone's lying. Is it Redfield or Fauci? Uh, I'll go with Redfield for uh, 400 here, Todd, right? I, I mean, th this is the Dr. Fauci who wants to declare that I am the science, unquote, right? And it's amazing even now when the FBI, the Energy Department, say that COVID uh, that originated in Wuhan, China, most likely came from a lab that studies, you know, bat viruses in Wuhan, China. It's like we've talked about here. It's the greatest analogy ever, John Stewart. If there was a chocolate outbreak in Hershey, Pennsylvania, the first place we would look is if that happened would be, you know, the chocolate factory, right? But Fauci will never admit that he was wrong. Uh, perhaps be, 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 he was be behind, uh, because he was behind anyway, uh, gain of Fauci, re I'm sorry, gain of function sure, research, sure. misspoke there, in COVID <laughs> that led to 7 million people dying worldwide, more than 1 million Americans dying here. So it, he could continue to stay in this safe space as far as it came from a wet market, but more and more people are saying, logically, that just doesn't make any sense. Sense. So to be clear, it's not Redfield that's lying, it's Fauci, Ash. Right, yeah. Uh, now yeah. Let's, talk, let's talk about Vice President Kamala Harris for just a second. She has a new priority. Watch this. One of the young leaders was talking to me about climate mental health. I said, tell me what's going on with your peers. Climate mental health. And one example is, you know, whether when they're ready, could they start a family? Yes. Worried about what that would mean. And the stress of it. Okay, Joe, what in the world is climate mental health? Something I will never teach my kids, Ashley. I mean, this is how this administration operates, through fear, through misinformation, even if it involves scaring children. The vice president should be talking about how test scores just fell to their lowest level in 30 years. And she should be stressing the need for our teacher unions, our, our educators to get back on track and teaching our kids the basic blocking and tackling that will make them competitive with other countries around the world, where we're behind, well behind the likes of China and even countries like Ireland and Estonia in math writing and reading. This is why, by the way, uh, Kamala Harris is not being considered as a plan B to Joe Biden if he doesn't run, but he is running, so what are we talking about anyway? Anyway, guys, have a great, great weekend. It's Friday. Yeah. I gotta go. It's gotta yoga go. Friday. 
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.